So uh, in multi-party computation, uh, we consider n parties. Each party has a private input, and they wish to perform some joint computation on those inputs. For example, compute a function on those inputs. So the dream scenario is if the parties would have access to a fully trusted third party that takes their inputs and does the computation for them. Of course, in reality, we don't want to assume such a fully trusted party, but what we do assume is that parties can communicate over some communication network, for example, the internet. And roughly speaking, MPC requires that the parties can emulate the behavior of this ideal evaluation here with the trusted party by running a protocol where they exchange messages over this network. And security requires that this emulation is sound even when some parties cheat, they misbehave. This is modeled by considering a central adversary that gets to corrupt the parties and uses them to attack the protocol, in which case security requires that for any such adversary, there exists a corresponding ideal adversary that corrupts the parties in this dream world and achieves essentially the same effect. Okay, so uh, what do we know? What is the evolution of uh, the field in terms of uh, at least efficiency? So the Big Bang was in the 80s with the first feasibility results. In the 90s, we had some great works on improving asymptotic efficiency of the solutions. And actually, recently, we had great solutions that have practical efficiency, and we have implementations demonstrating a huge potential in the field. But actually, in this talk, I would like to discuss an issue which has been somehow missed through this line of development. And this has to do with the type of security that we require when we design protocols for dishonest majorities, a majority of corrupted parties. So there, we, we, we want the so-called security with abort. What is the security? As before, we want the protocol to implement its specification, the dream world, even when some parties misbehave. But when we want protocols to tolerate dishonest majorities, then we allow the protocol to abort. This is not an error, this is part of the talk. So the best case scenario of aborting is that everyone hears about it. And although we know from classically possibility results that we cannot have abort-free protocols against dishonest majorities, this situation is very nasty because this introduces a trivial type of denial of service. So the adversary can just by corrupting a single party stop the computation and make us not be able to compute anything. So in this work, we put forward, we, we, we put forward in, uh, study a more robust notion of security with identifiable abort, or in short, IDMPC. So what's the idea here? Again, our notion is against dishonest majorities. And the protocol is supposed to uh, implement its specification as before, and it might abort that, as I said, we cannot avoid. But when the protocol aborts, everyone learns the identity of at least one cheater, at least one party that they can blame for the abort. And this is great because they can, for example, go and restart the protocol, repair the compromised party, or maybe even eliminate this party and go on the computation without him. So this is clearly a more robust and therefore more desirable notion of security. And in fact, if we look at the first results, actually a tweak of the so-called GMW protocol by Goldreich, Mikari, and Wigderson does achieve this notion of security with identifiable abort. And although by now this protocol is considered rather inefficient, I mean, it's after all a feasibility result. It's been still used as is, as a primitive, in many construction until very lately. Actually, in most furnace constructions, we use GMW. So to put things in, in, uh, in, in context, let me just tell you what we know about security in the presence of dishonest majorities. And let me start with a standard security with abort definition. So here, we know that if the parties have access to an oblivious transfer a primitive, then they can compute any function information theoretically without any computational assumption. And as a reminder, oblivious transfer, or OT, is a two-party primitive which allows a sender that has two inputs to obliviously transmit one of them to a receiver. Okay, that's the situation information theoretically. It's great. Actually, even without OT, it's not that bad in the computational setting. We have really fast protocols, and in particular in the pre-processing model where we do some computation before the parties get the inputs, we have really fast protocols there, and we can somehow split them in two categories. One is protocols that are Yao-based or garbage circuit-based, and the fastest among those make black box use of symmetric key crypto, for example, uh, PRF. And the other category 
is uh, protocols that push all the computation, all the complex computation that involves cryptographic operations to the pre-processing phase, and then they have a very fast information theoretic online phase. And this is the example of this is the speeds type of protocols by Damgard et al. Okay, so this situation looks, looks really good uh, in security with standard board. Let's see what happens if we want to identify a black board. Here, a, a result by Isai Ostrovsky and Seyalioglu from 2012 proves that oblivious transfer is not sufficient for information theoretic security. And in fact, they prove that having any pairwise correlation is not sufficient for information theoretic security. By pairwise correlation, I mean having access to any such sampling functionality that samples from a pair from an arbitrary distribution and gives one component to each party. So that's the first type of bad news. So in the plain model, so if we just want computational security, things are slightly better, but not much better. Here we don't have any possibility, but we also don't have efficient solutions. And I mean, on a high level, we can think of just two solutions here, or two types of solutions. One is the GMW solution, which makes uh, use of crypto in a non-black box matter. And then we have the Kramer, Duncan, and Nielsen solution, which uh, actually uses public key operations per gate while evaluating the circuit. So um, if you compare these to the solutions that uh, have given us in the standard, like the non-identifiable abort model, efficient, practically efficient protocols, you can see that none of them follows this paradigm. So it's not clear whether we can optimize these solutions to get something much better. And there are obstacles. Okay, so in this work, we improve on both these directions. So we provide the first information theoretic ID MPC, that's, I use that in short for MPC with identifiable abort, a protocol from n-wise correlated randomness. And by that, I mean, given access to a sampling functionality which samples an n vector and gives one component per party, and contrast this to the impossibility of using pairwise correlated randomness, which I just mentioned. And we also provide the first computationally secure ID MPC protocol, which makes black box use of a cryptographic primitive, and in particular of an oblivious transfer protocol. And as a nice theoretical teaser, contrast this to the fact that we cannot have such a protocol using an OT hybrid. So to our knowledge, this is the first task demonstrating this uh, nice theoretic paradox. Okay, so in the rest of the talk, I will discuss those two results, but let me first uh, lay down the model. Uh, formally, we have n parties, P1 to Pn, we consider a static adversary who corrupts arbitrary many of those parties at the beginning of the protocol execution, and we assume a synchronous network. So let me start with the first result, which is an information theoretic protocol from n-wise correlated randomness. In fact, what we provide is way more general. We provide a compiler that takes any protocol which is information theoretically secure in the semi-honest model, assuming correlated randomness, and compiles it to a protocol which is information theoretically secure with identifiability in the malicious model with uh, uh, corrupted majorities in the correlated randomness model where the, ran the correlated randomness for the malicious protocol is polynomial to the initial correlated randomness of the semi-honest protocol and the round complexity is also about the same up to a very small constant factor. Now, how we get from uh, this compiler the result I just described, the first information theoretic ID MPC protocol, we just instantiate this by using uh, our favorite OT hybrid semi-honest protocol uh, in the literature and pre-computing the OT. So um, let me give you some more details of how our compiler works. Our setup does the following. It gives to each party its randomness for running the semi-honest protocol and commits the party to this randomness. And then we have every party commit to its input and then execute the protocol, the semi-honest protocol, where in each step, every party broadcasts uh, the message, his next message, and proves that it is indeed his next message in protocol pi in zero knowledge. So for those familiar with the GMW compiler, you might notice a similarity. Actually, you can think of our compiler as the information theoretic analog of GMW. But of course, to have an information theoretic analog, we need information theoretic components, and that's what we design here. We design information theoretic public commitments, information theoretic public zero knowledge on committed values. So uh, for the commitments, so information theoretic public or one to many commitments uh, is a primitive which allows a committer 
to commit to his input towards every party in a player set so that later on he can open this commitment again towards every party. So the properties are similar to standard commitments hiding and binding, namely the commit phase should leak no information on the input and at the end of this phase the committer should be bound to his input. But also we require the agreement property, which is non-standard in just two party primitives, uh, which says that at the end of the open phase, all parties agree on uh, whether the commitment was validly opened or not. And that's very important for getting identifiable abort and agreement on this abort. So how do we implement this primitive? We actually use a, a primitive from the information theoretic literature, which is known as information theoretic signatures due to Shikata et al. Um, you can think of these signatures as standard computational signatures, so there is a key generation, a signing, and a verification algorithm. The main difference is that the key generation, instead of uh, generating a signing key and a verification key, it generates a signing key and a vector of verification keys where uh, its component is given to one party and it's private to this party. So the properties that we want are, again, similar to standard computational signatures, unforgeability, someone without the, six, the signing key should not be able to generate valid signatures, and consistency, which says that if a signature is accepted by some honest party, it will be accepted by every honest party. So note that this consistency primitive is implicit in standard computational signatures because there's just one verification key. So this is clear there. Here, since we have several verification keys, it needs to be proved. Actually, we are not, we're just using uh, a construction that exists in the literature and proves that this is the case in Blackboard, and this is the construction by Sikata et al. So how can we use these signatures to implement information theoretic commitments? Um, let's say committer PI, as before. Our setup does the following. It samples a new key pair, secret key, and verification key vector pair from the key generation, and then it, it, it picks a uniformly random R and computes a signature on R with this signing key. And it gives the message R and the signature to the committer and the verification keys to the corresponding parties. So note that no one in this setting gets the signing key. So no one can generate signatures that would verify with those keys. So how can we use this setup to have a PI to commit? That's pretty simple. So he just computes a one-time part encryption with key of his input, with key being the randomness R he received. And then to open the commitment, he simply reveals the key and the corresponding signature. So everyone checks that it's valid and accepts or rejects otherwise. It's very easy to see that this uh, scheme is secure. The hiding property follows trivially from the fact that R is chosen uniformly random, hence is a good one-time pad key. The binding property follows from the fact that uh, sigma is unforgeable. So after the commit phase, there's only one possible key and hence one possible plain text that could be opened. And the agreement follows from the fact that sigma is consistent, which says that there is no way that some party will accept the opening and some will reject. So uh, this was about information theoretic commitments. We also designed an information theoretic uh, zero knowledge protocol, which uh, unfortunately I don't have the time to go through here. I will just tell you what ideas we're using. Of course, we are relying on our information theoretic commitments, and we are using the approach of uh, MPC in the head by Isai et al. So please read the paper, it's a very nice construction, if you're interested. So I would like in the uh, last couple of, talk, uh, couple of minutes, go to the second part of the talk, which is uh, the construction of a computational secure uh, IDMPC protocol using an, o using an OT protocol in a black box way. And in fact, also here, we prove something more general. We give a compiler, and we love compilers. So we give a compiler that transforms any IDMPC information theoretically secure in the correlated randomness model, for example, the one I just described, and compiles it into a computationally secure IDMPC in the plain model without correlated randomness. And this protocol here makes black box use of an OT protocol. So to give you an idea, let's say that this is our information theoretic protocol that we start with. So it has a setup phase where we have a sampling functionality and uh, which gives the randomness to the parties, and then it has an online computation phase where the parties compute given their uh, correlated randomness. So how can we turn this into a computational secure protocol in the plain model? Well, the, the idea would be to try to implement the setup by a protocol that has the properties that we want. 
namely makes black box use of an oblivious transfer protocol. So let's say that this is our new goal. So you might now be thinking that we are actually chasing our tail. What we wanted was to have a protocol with these properties for implementing any functionality. And now I'm saying that our goal is to have a protocol with these properties for implementing this functionality. Why is it easier? Well, the reason is that this functionality takes no inputs from the parties. So we don't need to worry about input privacy while we try to evaluate this functionality. And this is very important in our construction. So here's an idea of how to implement this functionality. We start by having every party commit to its randomness. There are no inputs. So the committed message, the committed randomness, uniquely defines everything that should happen during the protocol execution. Then we take our favorite OT hybrid protocol from the literature, which is secure with abort, but without identifiability, and turn it into an, a protocol in the plane model which is secure with abort with identifiability as follows. We replace all calls to the OT hybrid by executions of a corresponding OT protocol. And then we make all the communication, all the transcript publicly verifiable. This means that whenever there is a message transmitted over the point-to-point -point channels, we have the sender choose the first part of his randomness, send it to the receiver as key, and broadcast a one-time part encryption of his message. Uh, you can see this way, if someone learns the randomness, he can actually figure out the, the message just from the, the, the public view. So we have the parties execute the protocol like that, and we instruct them, if they were about to abort in this protocol, to come out and complain and say something went wrong, I'm about to abort, and at this point, we have everyone open his randomness. Now remember what I said, the randomness, there's no input, so the randomness uniquely defines everything that should happen. So we can go step by step using the open randomness and see who did not follow the protocol. So that's what we do, we find the party that did not follow the protocol and abort with the ID of that party. It's very relevant, again, I point out here, that the functionality has no inputs. So that's exactly why we can open everything, because we don't reveal anything. At that point where we open everything, we know we're going to abort. We just announce randomness. So this implements the setup and gives us the protocol that we want. Um, just note that that protocol in the online phase makes no use of crypto, right? It just invokes the information theoretic protocol we are compiling. So what we get here is actually a protocol in the pre-processing model with an information theoretic online phase, which matches the, the construction of the most efficient solutions in the literature for uh, multi-party computation with a board. So, to conclude, here uh, we put forward the uh, security definition of a multi-party computation with identifiable abort, which is more robust and therefore more desirable than standard security with abort. We designed the first information theoretic IDMPC protocol from correlated randomness and from n-wise in particular correlated randomness and contrast this to the fact that pairwise correlations are not sufficient. We construct the first computational security protocol in the plane model without correlated randomness, making black box use of crypto, in particular of an oblivious transfer protocol, and that only in a pre-processing phase. And there are several other problems, just to mention uh, some. So you might notice uh, 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 some asymmetry, I mean some gap here. We have feasibility from n-wise correlated randomness, but we have impossibility from pairwise correlated randomness. So the question is what happens in the middle? Is n minus one wise correlation, uh, are minus, n minus one correlation sufficient? Of course, the question, so our result are, we have not played all the optimization tricks, not even the existing optimization tricks in the literature, so there is room for making the solutions way more efficient, and the big question is, okay, when we do that and implement it, how competitive are they with respect to the state of the art in the non-identifiable abort literature? And with that, I'd like to thank you.